Hello everyone and welcome to another season of Sky Scholar. Over the course of the coming months, it is my hope to resume our analysis of the HR diagram in astrophysics as we cover such topics including planetary nebula, white dwarf stars, wolf Rayet stars, luminous blue variables, Cepheid variables, and planets. But first, I would like to bring your attention to this new textbook on thermodynamics. It came to my attention because of its citation of a paper which I wrote with Stephen Crothers regarding thermodynamic properties. This paper is somewhat unique in thermodynamics because it not only covers intensive and extensive character, but it also addresses how properties which are neither intensive nor extensive must be handled. I have now produced many videos on intensive and extensive properties and their importance in establishing whether thermodynamic expressions are valid. If one examines many of the common equations in astrophysics, one will find that they violate the laws of thermodynamics, including Eddington's mass luminosity expression and the equations for the temperatures of gaseous stars, Hawking and Unruh temperatures, and for the Parker solar winds. In each of these cases, the temperatures obtained are not intensive, which is a violation of the zeroth and second law of thermodynamics. Astrophysicists often create the problem as they assign temperatures using expressions which account for gravitational potential. But in reality, potential energy cannot manifest any temperature. These questions have all been addressed in my joint papers with Stephen Crothers. As a rule, equations which contain the universal constant of gravitation are very likely to be invalid relative to thermodynamic character. However, there is one condition where gravity can be introduced into a thermodynamic expression without the risk of violating the intensive nature of temperature or pressure. This occurs whenever the term for gravity is present in the exponent of an equation. I have commented previously on the effect of exponents in thermodynamic expressions in this video. Stephen Crothers and I have recently considered the barometric equation as an example. This expression is utilized to determine pressure as a function of elevation above the earth. You will note that in this equation little g is present in the exponent. However, exponential terms simply reduce to pure numbers and therefore contribute no thermodynamic character to an expression. As a result, the expression for barometric pressure as a function of elevation is intensive on both sides. Since pressure must be intensive and since the exponent reduces to a pure number, which makes no contribution to thermodynamic character. It is easy to believe that all this talk relative to thermodynamic balance in equations is of little practical importance but nothing could be further from the truth. Our attempts to achieve sustainable fusion on Earth using the ITER reactor in France is a case in point. ITER is built on the belief that we can achieve fusion based on our understanding that such processes take place in a gaseous sun. Here is what the ITER team writes. Fusion, the nuclear reaction that powers the sun and the stars is a promising long-term option for sustainable, non-carbon emitting, global energy supply. Harnessing fusion's power is the goal of ITER, which has been designed as the key experimental step between today's fusion research machine and tomorrow's fusion power plants. Yes, the stars are powered by fusion, but the problem is that the sun and the stars are not gaseous in nature, and this has consequences. There are over 100 fusion reactors on Earth today. While providing some insight into fusion, without exception, these have been useless devices in terms of sustainable fusion for humanity. ITER is simply the largest of these misadventures. The idea behind ITER is to confine a gaseous plasma using powerful magnetic fields and a total of 300 megawatts of electrical power. The resulting plasma will then be made to absorb 50 megawatts of thermal power. As a result, one expects to obtain a total of about 500 megawatts of power from fusion. The ITER team claims that this is a tenfold gain for the ratio of fusion power to injected thermal power. 
but it is actually less than a two-fold gain relative to total electrical power consumption. In reality, the reactor has a plasma volume which is only six times greater than the current world leader, namely the JT-60SA reactor in Japan. The ITER project is actually funded by all the superpowers of the world, including the USA, China and Russia, along with Japan, South Korea and the European Union. ITER was predicted to cost between 18 and 22 billion euros, but some have now estimated that it will cost between 45 and 60 billion dollars. As such, it has been described as the most expensive science experiment of all time. Just compare the cost of ITER to the Large Hadron Collider with a total cost of about 8 billion euros. Now let's get back to the premise of the problem, namely the idea that fusion actually occurs in gaseous plasma stars. Steve Crothers has recently analyzed these astrophysical claims and his illuminating results have been published in this paper. In the end, all of the key equations relative to plasma temperatures required for fusion in gaseous stars can be shown to stand in violation of the laws of thermodynamics. Let us take a moment to examine Steve's paper. According to astrophysicists, the temperature of the gaseous plasma required to overcome the Coulomb barrier is given by this expression. This temperature is derived from the supposed Coulomb potential energy between the particles of an ideal gas, where Z1 and Z2 are equal to the number of protons in each nucleus, E is the electron charge, K is Boltzmann's constant, and R is the internuclear distance. Using two protons and R approximately one femtometer, this results in a temperature of about 10 to the 10 Kelvin. Astronomers therefore concluded that the temperature of the sun's gaseous interior near 1.58 times 10 to the 7 Kelvin is too low to overcome the Coulomb barrier. Yet this expression is incorrect because the temperature on the left side is intensive while the right side is not intensive. In an attempt to overcome the insufficient temperature for the solar interior to produce nuclear reactions, a new expression is advanced in quantum mechanical terms for a proton to tunnel through the Coulomb barrier as follows. Setting Z1 equals Z2 equals 1 and the reduced mass mu sub m equal to mu sub p divided by 2 for two protons, then a temperature of approximately 10 to the 7th Kelvin is obtained to substantiate the conclusion that nuclear reactions can occur inside a gaseous sun. But once again, this equation is thermodynamically invalid because the right side is composed only of pure numbers and physical constants, none of which have any thermodynamic character, whereas the left side has intensive thermodynamic character. One cannot equate temperature only to pure numbers and physical constants because neither has any thermodynamic character. The astronomers go on to calculate the minimum mass and MIM of a gaseous star composed of a fuel characterized by mean molecular weight mu in terms of mass fractions for a thermonuclear ignition temperature T. This mass is said to be given by the following. In this expression, all terms on the right except T are either pure numbers or physical constants. Hence, the right side is intensive because T to the three quarters is intensive but the left side is not intensive since mass is extensive. Approximate temperatures at which nuclear reactions occur are asserted to be given by this expression, where M is the reduced mass of the gas particles, where Z1 and Z2 denote the number of protons in each nucleus respectively, and the numerical coefficient psi is of the order of 10 to the minus 6. The left side is intensive while the right side is not intensive as it has no thermodynamic character at all being made up solely of constants. Finally, the assumption that a star is in hydrostatic equilibrium and obeys the ideal gas equation leads to this relation between stellar central temperature and density. In this expression, the left side is intensive, the right side is not. So one can see that all the key expressions predicting nuclear reactions in gaseous stars are thermodynamically invalid. The only reasonable solution to this dilemma is to recognize, as I have repeatedly stated, that the stars are comprised of condensed matter and nuclear reactions within stars must take advantage of lattice confinement fusion as I first advanced in this paper and discussed in these videos.
As for the ITER facility, it will be unable to produce any usable energy as it is strictly designed for research and unable to pump even a single electron into the electrical grid. It is also extremely doubtful that any of its offshoots will ever be successful. A more serious issue is that this project has diverted tremendous sums of money away from condensed matter physics and other promising disciplines. This occurred even though from the onset these ideas could have been demonstrated to be unsound. Gaseous plasma stars do not exist. Therefore, it was not reasonable to assume that any appreciable fusion would ever come from trying to confine a gaseous plasma. The answer for fusion must rest in condensed matter physics and the synthesis of new materials on Earth, including metallic hydrogen. For instance, if nuclear fusion could be initiated in a wafer of metallic hydrogen or deuterium, then the need to confine the atoms with magnets in order to achieve fusion would be eliminated as the lattice itself would confine the fusing nuclei, much like would occur in a condensed matter sun. One could think of initiating fusion reactions in small wafers in a controlled manner, perhaps by providing thermal energy through the use of laser initiation. Such approaches are much more likely to be successful and devoid of the need for massive reactors and magnets as required if one seeks to initiate fusion within a gaseous plasma. In the end, the answers do not rest in astrophysics and their modern models. It is high time to abandon the idea that gases can spontaneously collapse to form stars. Thermodynamic analysis has readily demonstrated that such concepts violate the laws of physics. Condensed matter physicists must have the courage to stand up for their own discipline and to counter such unreasonable claims as gaseous stars, big bangs, and black holes. Well, that is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, promote the channel, mention the videos to your friends and to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Scientific comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on the next video.